All right, in this video, we're going to be downloading and talking a bit about um, what do I want to call it? An SFTP program. <laughs> it will be different for Mac users and Windows users. We're going to use different pieces of software, but they work, they're virtually the same once they're running. But since the platforms are different, they have different software. So um, we're, we're, this video will be useful for both, right? As I, dis, as I discuss a little bit about uh, the use of the program. Uh, we get started by going over to, um, whoop, wrong one here. Let me go back to me. Second here. Okay, I think I got it here. Boom. All right. Um, I, I went to you deploy in into networking and SFTP. Now this stands for, by the way, secure file transfer protocol. All right, so it's encrypted file transfer. File transfer means we're going to move it from transfer a file from one computer to another. And in our case, what we're going to do is transfer files that we create, HTML files that we create on a local machine. We're going to transfer them from the local machine to Copeland. So we're transferring files. Mac users will use fetch for this. Windows users will use uh, WinSCP. All right. So when I searched for the software, I just searched for WinSCP. Uh, and, and then I, once I, I found the software, I, I saw a link there right at the top of this. It wasn't on this, not on this page. But on, if I go one page back or something, it'll be there, networking and SFTP. Click that, um, that link, and all of this software shows up, which includes our AnyConnect. Well, we've got Fetch and we've got WinSCP. There's our putty, right? And then there's this other VPN um, client here that we're not going to use. But for Win Mac users, download Fetch. Windows users, WinSCP. I'll be describing WinSCP, but Fetch works exactly the same way. And you can actually, if you wanted to see the exact use of Fetch, then um, we can look that up on Google. Download Win S and WinSCP, and there it is. There's the download for, for Windows. You'll be doing the same thing with Mac, but using Fetch. You want to use Fetch on, if you're on a Mac, WinSCP if you're on a Windows machine. All right, so let me come back here, and um, I already have it installed, so let me see if I can find it here. Give me one second. Okay, I got it. Um, you will have to be connected to AnyConnect, just as you did with um, SSH, right? Whether it was your SSH client or Putty, uh, this this software requires the same because we're connecting to Copeland, right? In, in such a manner, the same kind of way. So we want to do it through AnyConnect. Um, therefore, that that just requires that AnyConnect is connected. Um, you you if you are a Putty user, WinSCP will ask if you would like to import your um, putty settings, just choose yes there. Um, when you attempt to connect, then we're always still trying to connect to copeland.udl.edu. Um, so whether you have that imported or not, that's the host that you're trying to connect to. Um, so if you're a, a, a Mac user and you did not have putty, it doesn't matter. You're still just connecting to copeland.udel.edu, uh, port 22. Um, and then just connect to that. Uh, I, I know in WinSCP, at least, probably in Fetch as well, uh, there, there are boxes there to enter your username and password uh, before you connect. They, they don't seem to be, they don't seem to operate. And so it doesn't matter, you just connect, just click connect. And then uh, you'll get separate boxes that pop up for username and, and password, which is perfectly fine. Um, and once you get through that, <laughs> you'll be connected. And this is what you'll see, a screen that looks like this. It has, can you see my cursor? No, of course not. 
So I'm going to just highlight something so you can see where I am. On the left hand side, oh, now we can see it. All right, good. On the left hand side here um, is the local machine. On the right hand side is Copeland. So now what I can do is drag and drop files between. Right? So if I grab something from this side and I pull it over there, by the way, I'm not going to drop it, but I'm going to pull it like this. See, at this moment, it doesn't, it's got, it has a, a cursor with a line through it. Well, I, 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 I left clicked on it and I'm dragging it and holding the left click down. But as soon as I cross that line and go to the other machine, it's going to allow me to do it. I do have an index on both sides, right? Yeah, and they probably both have the same timestamp on them. 927. I'm looking at this timestamp here, right, right here. 927. 927. 453. 647. So obviously I made some sort of change using Pico to this file after I created it on this side. So I don't want to do this right now until I verify what's going on here. I, that is to say, I don't want to drop this. So I still have my finger on the button here. You can see the, the cursor has changed to a plus. If I drop it, it's gonna copy the file from this side to this side, from my local copy to the, to the, uh, to the remote copy. It is a copy, it's not a move. It's a copy paste, not a cut paste. All right, so I'm gonna go back over here and let go so I don't do that. What you'll wanna do, ultimately with this whole setup, is uh, you'll see what I've done here. This is this is from uh, Sys103. You you know that this whole what this whole setup is, or it's from Copeland Mini. Might even read it up here. Yeah, you can see, we can see in the top, we can see that I'm in my public HTML on Copeland, right? And this is my local file system, C colon slash. So what I want to do, or what you want to do, what I have done, is reproduce the structure that you're using on this side, on Copeland, on your own local machine, so that you have kind of a mirror image. So everything looks the same on both sides. And the way we'll do that is find some place on your local machine where you'll be able to find your files again, right? You don't want to lose them. And then we want to create the same structure. So you'll see, you'll notice there's a Sys101, a Sys103 over there. I have Sys105. So for instance, in Sys101, if I look in that, and then I can go to the parent. Look at this. This is like CD space dot dot, right? Up one, see the up arrow. I click that, I go up to the parent from Sys101 back to the, to the folder that contains the folder I was in. Um, I guess I did more work on this one. I, I'm just looking through my own files here again. On Co This is Copeland I'm looking at right now, right? On this side. I just don't know when I put this. Well, here's the Sys101. You would have a Sys103 if you were in Sys103, that you are in Sys103. Um, in Sys101, we're, we're not doing this. We're finished already. Oh, this is my example elements folder where I was doing table and clickable link and, and that kind of stuff, right? And if we go up one more, this is my index. This is public HTML. You see public HTML right here. So kind of get your bearings straight. I have Sys101, then you have a Sys103, and then you have a Sys103.html in there. And you may have, if you decided to do it the way I did it, um, you, you could have uh, an examples folder here where your maybe your some of those other clickable image and um, table and uh, whatever else we did, some CSS stuff, uh, could be in separate files. But anyway, kind of move around in this side using the op that's cd space dot dot until this makes sense to you, so you you recognize it. 
right? You said, no, this, this is my, my Copeland directory structure. Okay, and then what we want to do, I wonder if it's going to let us go up one more. I mean, we can because this is our directory, right? And so here's my public underscore HTML right here. I don't want to drop files in, into this directory, right? Because Apache can only read from public underscore HTML. But if I find a place here on my local machine that looks appropriate, I could grab the HTML folder and it would make a copy coming the other way. So I could copy everything from Copeland onto my local machine. The only thing is you want to be careful that you know where you are on your local machine. So if you remember from the very beginning of class, I had tried to um, draw some similarities between Windows and Copeland. Now they're really similar, right? <laughs> uh, but I, I had created a public HTML directory in my Dropbox, if you if you remember, in my number home directory. This is not going to be on your Windows machine or your Mac. This is something I, I just created myself. But you may be, from the start, right on your desktop. And if that's the case, then you could create a copy of public underscore HTML on your desktop of your local machine just by making sure that this is your desktop address on the left-hand side. And notice I moved up to my home directory so that I could see public underscore HTML right and then i could just pull public underscore html over like that i click it and pull it over now, i'm not going to do it because i don't want it there it's just gonna, i'm just going to confuse myself i already have the whole structure laid out <laughs> and so then we have the same structure in our on our our local machine that we have on the remote machine so whenever i change something on my local machine if I'm in Sys 101, let's say, and I change something there, then I want to come on my on my remote machine. I need to go into public HTML, right? And then Sys 101. And so I would want to pull this up and keep them keep them the same. So my local machine and my remote machine have the same directory structure and the same files. Now you can see that mine are a little bit not right because it's clear that I did something unless the timers aren't the same because I can see my timestamp is different between the two. So something changed on this one after this one, if we trust the clocks. I would also like to note, while we're looking at this, the permissions. And they call them, in this, this particular program, they call them rights, but it's permissions. We know them as permissions, and I can change them on this machine by, what do I do, click this? Well, there's gonna be a way for us to change those when we, when we move files over. What if I do that? I don't wanna uh, bog us down with this detail right now. But I, I was just taking a quick peek. We'll figure that out later. It's, it's gonna be something small. We just need to have the right thing to click. So I don't wanna, I don't wanna go too far with this. Uh, I really just wanted to give you a little, like a little brief introduction to uh, what this software is used for. So now we can build files using, if we're on Windows, Notepad++. If you're on Mac, you build files on your local machine um, using, I think it's called Edit for Mac. We're going to look it up and, and, and um, I'll, I'll mention it and probably in the page that these videos are on. Um, so you would create the file on your local machine and then find it here and pull it over where you want it on this machine. And we want, so we want to try to create them on this side in the appropriate location. That is exactly where we want them to be on this side. Now we're doing, it doesn't really matter. We can put them anywhere we want, but that keeps things organized in such a way that we know where we are on with these files, all right? Because now we're going between, on one screen here, we're looking at two different machines. It's been hard enough for us to just keep that mentally in mind <laughs> that these are two different machines. They are two physically different machines that we're um, transferring between. 
So that's a little bit of a, a brief introduction. Um, that this is separate from PuTTY, right? This is a different thing. We can't move files using PuTTY. Uh, but this software, there is one of these buttons here. This can be an SSH client as well. Wing SCP can. I don't know that Fetch can. So you could use this in both ways, WinSCP, either as it's one of these buttons up at the top of here. I'm I, sorry, I was looking at the I was looking at those buttons. Do you see? Yeah, you can see it from my cursor. Um, one of these buttons up here. If we investigate it more, we'll be able to change our mode kind of, I'm going to call it our mode, from uh, being an FTP client, so a file transfer client, to uh, an SSH client where we can remote control the machine. All right, and what will happen is when we click this button, if we ever find it, oh, I bet it's one of these. I bet it's that one looks a lot like it, like something that might do it. Anyway, that's something we can play around with. But um, if we click it, it's going to give us a whole new box, right? A whole new dialog box that uh, is open to Copeland, just like Putty, or just like your SSH client. So these clients and Fetch as well, as long as Fetch can do this, I'm not sure we can look into that. Um, they can be used as both an FTP client and an SSH client, oftentimes, depending on what we're trying to do. That might be it right there. I wish that pop-up would come up but I'm not getting a pop up there. So anyway, good enough. Um, I think we've got a good enough basic inter introduction to why we want this software. So at this point, you should have both Notepad++ and WinSCP installed. If you're using a Windows machine, this probably works also the same way with a Chromebook. Um, the Mac will have its own editor built in already. Um, I'll just have to get the details for you on that. And then if you're on the Mac, you'll use Fetch instead of WinSCP. So that's the two. That's get, that gets us started, I think. Let's see how well this goes over, and uh, we'll pick up from here. We'll start making some modifications and trying some things.